Well, on the vaccine front today was the first day of a critical two day meeting of the CDC's advisory committee. The outside panel of experts reviewing the ongoing safety and effectiveness data for the vaccines and also last week's recommendation that Pfizer boosters be authorized for those age 65 and older or those at uh, high risk for virus trouble. Dr. Frank Me George been following this meeting and is here with uh, the major takeaways so far. Doc. Yeah, Kim and Devin. So the main question that today's advisory committee and immunization practices meeting was really driving toward was trying to decide which Americans should receive a third or booster dose of the Pfizer vaccine. Now that decision won't be made until tomorrow and it won't happen until the FDA formally approves last week's advisory panel recommendation. During today's nearly six-hour meeting, the CDC's panel of outside experts discussed and debated data on the available COVID-19 vaccines. A clear case was made that over time, the antibody response to the vaccine decreases, especially in the elderly. Specifically in older adults, um, they start with lower neutralization titers than younger adults. And because they start at lower titers, they may be faster to fall below the limit of detection. Although the immune response fell, coverage of variants remained good. We've yet to find a variant that escapes neutralization. As you can see, whether we're talking about alpha, beta, the more recent delta, or Lambda variants. That was data presented by Dr. Bill Gruber from Pfizer as they made their case for the need to boost their fully approved two-dose series. As for side effects from a third dose, they were about the same. Local reactions were comparable between the third dose and the second dose. The panel also reviewed CDC data on a third dose from the safety monitoring systems in place. COVID-19 vaccines are being administered under the most intensive vaccine safety monitoring effort in U.S. history. For people receiving a third dose, the V-SAFE monitoring system was reassuring. Injection site reactions, systemic reactions, and health impacts, including inability to perform daily activities and inability to work, were all less frequently reported following dose 3 than dose 2. Now, there was a fair amount of inquiry and discussion over the risk of myocarditis with a third dose. So far, there is no indication that it is more frequent than following the second dose, and it is still considered very rare. Nonetheless, it is a condition that will be continued to be monitored. So, Frank, were they focusing only on making a case for boosters for the elderly, as we heard discussed, or did they broaden the discussion out to all age groups? Well, you know, they actually discussed all age groups, and there were decreases in vaccine efficacy, actually, across the board for all ages. But it was most pronounced in people over age 65, which, of course, really supports the need for seniors to yeah. get that booster dose. Certainly seemed to. All right, Doc. We've got much more to come here on Local 4 News at 5. Andrew's in after the